How to learn Unreal Engine in 15 days. Let's go. Day one, understanding and navigating the user interface. When you first jump into Unreal or any unfamiliar software for that matter, things can seem pretty confusing, but fear not. Unreal Engine's editor has a clean user interface and things start to make sense pretty quickly once you mess around a bit. But before you get into the editor, you'll need to first create a new project in the project browser. Once the editor is loaded, it's time to navigate. Since Unreal is a game engine first and foremost, to move around in the perspective view mode, you use the W, A, S, and D keys while holding the right mouse button, like you would in many computer games. One neat feature of navigating is you can change the speed at which you move around. At the top right corner of your scene is a camera icon with the number four, usually shown by default. Click on this and you can tweak how fast your camera or navigation will be. This is especially helpful once your scene gets a little bigger. You'll also notice there are quite a few menus in Unreal, but the main UI elements to get used to are the Content Browser, World Outliner, Details Panel, and the Place Actors Panel. The best place to learn about the UI is from the Unreal Engine documentation on Epic's website. Now, this is all well and good, but if you really, really want to learn Unreal Engine in depth and how to create beautiful, beautiful environments, you can check out my brand new environment art course called the Environment Artist Survival Kit. We're going to learn everything from making flowing grass to fluffy trees, sweeping landscapes, and everything in between. All 13 hours of content are only $49 forever. And you can also get a discount on the 3D coloring book as a bonus as well. So if you've been waiting to get both, now is your chance. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the courses. So for day two and three, you're gonna learn how to import, move, and scale assets. Now, the best resource for this is going to be Quixel Megascans. This is a completely free resource for high quality photo scan textures and assets when you use Unreal Engine. To start importing Megascans, all you have to do is download the Quixel Bridge app and activate the Live Link plugin for your editor. Just a small note, next year when Unreal Engine 5 is out, this will be already integrated in the editor. When it comes to importing various assets, I recommend creating multiple folders in the content browser to keep things organized. For example, make one for your meshes and make one for your materials, etc. Once you've imported some assets, you can just click and drag the mega scans into the viewport. Now you can freely manipulate your objects by moving, scaling, and rotating with the W, E, and R keys. Feel free to mess around a bit and see what you can make. This is a super, super fun phase. Days four and five are going to be learning about materials, shaders, and textures. One of the aspects of Unreal Engine that makes it so amazing is the intuitive way you can create materials. Arguably the most important feature to get good at is the material editor. This editor is where you're going to assemble your texture maps and combine them to create a base material. If you click on an imported Megascans material, you can see how they assemble one. This material will render in a certain way depending on the type of shader it's using. So what is the difference between a texture, a material, and a shader? Well, a texture is a bitmap image used to input data about the different properties that end up making your material. These properties, for example, are things like color, normals, roughness, and metalness, also known as PBR textures. A material is a bunch of parameters, such as colors, numbers, images, and texture maps put together. And a shader is a piece of code that controls the color of each pixel on the screen. The material editor is relatively easy to get started with. However, it is such a deep part of Unreal that it could take a lifetime to truly master. So please be patient while learning and have fun with it. Day six and seven are going to be learning how to create landscapes and how to create a simple scene. So before you start importing mega scans, I recommend making a small scene with a handful of assets with a clear reference or idea for where your scene is located and what your scene is going to be about. Once you have your scene planned out, you need to create a landscape. Some people do this in a separate modeling package, but it's more intuitive in the long run to create the landscape in Engine. The reason being that certain plugins rely on Unreal Engine to recognize a landscape mesh for some of its features to work properly, such as Unreal's built-in water plugin. So once you've created a landscape, you can start importing those lovely mega scans and building your scene. Just remember to click back on the select mode in the modes tab to be able to fully edit your scene again. Again, this is a really fun section and I recommend spending at least two days on this while you're trying to get the basics down. So take your time with this one and have fun with it. On day eight, you're gonna get familiar with Unreal Engine's lighting systems. One of the most important and difficult aspects of environment art. Lighting has the power to make or break your scene. It shouldn't be rushed and needs a lot of trial and error to get right. So there are two types of lighting in real time game engines, dynamic and baked. Dynamic lighting is rendered in real time, meaning if you move an object in game or in the editor, its shadows will be updated in real time also. 
One of the downsides of lighting things dynamically is that its cost on performance is very, very heavy, and also it lacks global illumination. Baked lighting, on the other hand, is a static lighting that pre-renders lighting and the shadows that objects cast. It is very, very much superior when optimizing performance, and most games use it with a combination of dynamic lighting when necessary. You'll also get better global illumination and shadows using this strategy. The biggest downside of baked lighting is its restrictive nature with moving objects. For example, when you compute lighting, the shadows cast by the object will stay in place despite moving the object. With Lumen on the rise in Unreal Engine 5, dynamic lighting is becoming indistinguishable from baked lighting, with all of the global illumination, virtual shadows, and optimization built into it. On day 9 and 10, you're going to get very familiar with the foliage tool. This tool will allow you to paint with a brush on your landscape, so you don't have to hand place trees, grasses, and other very simple meshes that are going to be scattered around your environment. You can also easily randomize the rotation and scale and position of each foliage asset in its details panel in the foliage mode editor. Another cool thing to get to know when making larger worlds is Unreal Engine 4's procedural volumes for foliage placement. This allows you to set parameters for how your trees will populate the terrain without having to do the actual hand painting. You just set the box and then you can automatically generate trees with different age and rotation. Learning these two tools are extremely important when rapidly creating scenes. So again, take some time and really get to know this one. So on days 11 through 13, we're gonna be learning VFX. As an environment artist, one might think that learning visual VFX isn't necessary, but VFX is intricately tied to environment art and can really push your scenes to the next level. It's important to keep in mind that it isn't necessary to learn complex VFX skills, but at least learn some basic effects like wind animation, water effects, particle effects like smoke, fire, or perhaps some like magic looking particles. And if you really wanna dive deeper into the environment aspects of effects, destruction effects could be another really fun avenue you could spend in the next three days. In fact, if you wanna learn some basic stylized VFX, I actually have a bunch on our channel. So go ahead and check those out. I'll leave a link in the description. On day 14, I want you to get to terms with composition and optimization. When you're making environments, there may come a point when you feel like something just doesn't feel right with your scene. Chances are it has to do with the composition, but don't fret, it happens to all of us. Composition is the arrangement of elements within a work of art based on the principles of art. These elements include the arrangements of objects in the scene, concepts of composition date back thousands of years, and they are fantastic guidelines to follow when making art, whether it's digital, traditional, 3D, or 2D. Another small tip I wanna give you is when you're about to embark on creating a new scene, it's highly recommended that you think about the composition of your scene during the planning and block out phases of your scene. This will help you not waste precious time later on in your scene and will give you a good sense of the overall direction you need to go when you start making assets. Day 15, we're gonna be practicing polishing your scene. When you finish practicing these steps, whether you're following a tutorial or just playing around in Unreal Engine, it's time to put all of these techniques into practice and try and create your own scene that pushes you a little bit out of your comfort zone. Once you get to the last 10% of your first scene, you'll probably feel pretty depleted, but keep pushing the visuals. The last 10% of your scene will either make it or break it in the end. It's the most pivotal point in an environment artist's scene creation, and honestly is what separates okay art from great art. This part of the pipeline is called polish. Polish can mean anything that needs to be done to get the quality to a point where you can hold up to other artists' work and be proud of it. I don't expect you to make a AAA game right on the first try, but following these steps will really help get you close much, much faster. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.